Hi everyone, Ted Wyman here with the Winnipeg Jets training camp report. I'm joined today by Sun Hockey reporter Scott Billick, who is out at Bell MTS Place and has been throughout training camp. And Scott, you know, this is our first time to chat about what you've seen so far through about a week of training camp. What has struck you the most about what you're seeing from the Winnipeg Jets so far? Yeah, you know, the weirdest thing about it is that you know, you're looking for skill. You're looking for guys who are stepping into the lineup. What are, you know, what are Brendan Dillon and, and Nate Schmidt bringing into it? But really, the biggest thing that's, that's, that's stuck out right now sort of is kind of the camaraderie. It, it feels very light. It, it, it's, um, it, it's fun out there. You can see guys smiling. There's competitive juices. Those are flowing, of course. Um, but it, it, they're having fun. I mean, I, I, you know, I think back to the first day last week where – Brendan Dillon was out there hitting Mark Shifley, Christian Veselainen, and kind of in injecting a little bit of that, um, you know, kind of that, I, I suppose, urgency, you know, just to get, you know, let's get off the, you know, get off on a, on, on a good foot, uh, you know, kind of hit the ground or, or ice, as it were, running and, 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 and going from there. So that's been kind of the, one of the biggest things that I've seen so far is just everybody looks kind of you know, for relaxed, but relaxed in a good way. It, it, there's, there's, it seems like a content nature throughout the room. And, and we're not allowed, you know, sort of into the rooms at, at this point with the restrictions, but you see the ice and you see the way it get, like guys talk about kind of, you know, how much fun it is this year, how much, um, you know, people just, there's a good feeling. People are, and one of the big things almost everybody said is that they're excited. And, and I'm not going to say that they weren't saying that over the last two years, um, but I think there's that now a genuineness to that, that word, that excitement, uh, excitement word, because they have, like I just mentioned earlier, a Schmidt and a Dylan on the back end. And just, there's no contract disputes. There's no holdouts. Everybody's on the ice. Um, aside from Dylan Sandberg, there's no injuries. Um, and yeah, I think that there's just this general excitement right now. Yeah. A positivity. And that's the kind of thing that is almost certain to come when, the general manager, Kevin Chevaldeoff, has put together a, a roster that people wanted yeah. to see. You know, Winnipeg Jets fans wanted to see, uh, observers wanted to see. They thought if this team can add a few pieces, it can really be a Stanley Cup contender. Yeah. So you're going into a training camp in that kind of a situation, which is not what it's always been like, that's for sure. And even Coach Paul Maurice recognized that, you know, this is a different kind of year because they're going yeah. in with what most people would consider a stack lineup. So do you think it's kind of an all business uh, organization right now? Do you think that's the, the approach? I mean, you said it's yeah. light right now, but yeah. you can see that that's what these players are going to be thinking as they go forward here. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. And I, I think there is, because it, it is all business. I think there, I think the guys realize on this team, whether it's the youngest guy on the roster and whoever makes the roster out of training camp, we still got another week to go here. Um, or, or the veteran guys, the guys like the Blake Wheelers and the Paul Stasnys, who time is running out to win a Stanley cup in their career. Um, and, and just in organizational sense, I mean, we, we talk about it. There's probably a two to three year window here before, you know, contracts like Mark Shifley's and Connor Hellebuck's come up, you know, key pillars of this team, um, you know, and, and because you've brought in these, these, these top four defensemen, I mean, Kevin Sheveldayoff, the general manager of this team, has not been able to do that until this year. I mean, in 48 hours, a lot, Jets fans remember, you know, in the end of July, that, you know, the complexion of this team changed dramatically. And, and so there is that... Uh, you know, is it a win now mentality? I, I think it is. You know, I think this team, I don't think it's a, you know, if you don't win this year, you blow it all up. But I think there is that now that mindset is, okay, we got two to three years to kind of figure this out, to take a good stab at a Stanley Cup and, and, and try and win it. And, and that seems to be what's on everybody's mind here. We talked to all the guys here, you know, we, we've been through pretty much the whole roster who's for sure going to play and they all have sort of said it like, the time, you know, the time is now because there isn't a lot of time left for some of these guys before either they move on in life or they move on to maybe a different team in a, a new contract or just before there is a bit of a shakeup, you know, in the roster because of guys moving out or that sort of thing. And, and you've replaced, in a sense, the Dustin Buffin. You've re replaced, in a sense, the Jacob Truba. Uh, and you have now an emerging talent in, in, in Logan Stanley. You also have Billy Heinle who could step in. So you have some guys here, like 
there's no question marks this year, really. Your question marks are what are the fourth line going to look like? And here's a line that historically doesn't play a lot of minutes every night. Um, well, they are important, but they also have a guy like Riley Nash, who seems to be, you know, when we talk about the Nate Thompsons and Trevor Lewis, very much guys in a role, role players, right? But Riley Nash has a bit of an offensive, you know, upside to him that the Jets haven't really had on the fourth line, if you don't count Matthew Perot at times, who's played up and down the lineup. So, yeah, there just seems to be a sense of, you know, the, the time is sort of now and, and in the next two to three years to really build on what they have in this roster and build it into, uh, you know, a Stanley Cup winner, right? It's not just a, a contender anymore. You know, this, this lineup went from, okay, we kind of sort of have to figure out the back end to now we have, and now it's time to go out there and, and show that, you know, this team can uh, compete for a Stanley Cup. So I, I guess one question area, question mark area where a lot of uh, people would look is backup goalie with uh, Eric Comrie being the man who's going to be there. It, it would appear uh, Mark Shifley, or sorry, yeah, Connor Hellebuck obviously is the starter and is going to play a, a very large amount of games for the one yep. he gets. But, you know, maybe Eric Comrie hasn't really proven himself, not certainly the way that Laurent Brassois had in the past for the Jets. So is that a big part of this training camp, uh, getting a look at him? And another question, just while we're at it, is who else has stood out for you so far? Certainly, I've seen some of your tweets and some goals from Cole Perfetti that look yeah. good. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, first of all, I'll answer the, you know, the, the con Eric Comrie question. I think that might be the biggest question mark on this team. Can Eric Comrie shoulder the load as an NHL backup, who's probably going to be asked to play between 15 and 18 games this season? And you're going to be expected to win those those hockey games, or at least a good portion of them. Um, I, I think the issue is if Eric Comrie doesn't stand out in this training camp, the Jets are going to have to start looking for somebody like an Anton Forsberg, that sort of like guy who's not making a lot of money right now, but has NHL backup experience, because that's the thing that Jets don't have this year. None of their goaltenders in camp here have, well, aside from Eric Comrie, who has a, a, essentially a cup of coffee in the NHL, has any other NHL experience. So you're really looking for after, you know, eight years now in the organization for Eric Comrie, you're really looking for him to, you, that you need him to be that guy, the guy that you drafted him. He obviously hasn't become the starter here. Connor Hellebuck, who was drafted a year after him, you know, has taken the reins with that and ran, you know, wild with it. Obviously a Vesna Cup winner or Vesna Trophy winner now, but you need Eric Comrie to step up and be that guy. So that's kind of, you know, where I stand on that. And, and that's where I think the Jets are also standing. And, and a lot of fans are hesitant about it. And I get it because Eric Comrie hasn't shown well in the NHL when he's played. That said, he's looked good in training camp. I would pin only one of the goals against of the three against him in, in Monday night's game or Sunday's game, sorry. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I think he's on the right path. He's getting there. Uh, but we're, again, we're going to have to see him in at least one more game uh, before four camps over. And in terms of who started, yeah, Cole Perfetti. I mean, here's a guy who, you know, you almost don't notice him until he does pulls off something good. But the reason why you don't notice him is because he looks like he fits in out there, right? You're not, he's, he's just there. He, he sort of fits in. So um, he's looked good. I thought Christian Veseline is really taking into that, that third line role alongside Paul Stasny and Adam Lowry. Um, that's going to be a big one. Uh, you know, they need Veseline to be there. They, obviously they could put, uh, you know, a Nash there. They could put, uh, David Gustafson there, but I thought he has stood out. Um, one guy that won't really get any looks this year because he has to go back to the WHL is Tyrell Bauer, uh, six round draft pick, I believe it is uh, in 2020 or maybe in 2019. Um, he's the Seattle uh, Thunderbirds captain. Man, that guy has come in here and and he doesn't care. He has no cares in the world. He knows he can't make the roster. Well, he's not going to make the roster on defense, but he's been going after guys. I mean, tenacious is what I'd call him. And and he's a guy to kind of look at, uh, you know, going forward in the future. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I think Evgeny Svechnikov, he's got to start making some of the nice shots that he puts himself in position for. But, the, you know, he's he's getting the systems, right? Here's a guy who was a first-round draft pick in 2015. He's come in. Um, there, there, I think there is higher expectations of him that he can play a fourth-round role and perhaps move up the roster if he can get into the right situation. He's looked good at times. The finishing hasn't been there yet. And then I guess the other thing is Andrew Kopp playing second line minutes um, or, or second line so far in camp. And that looks to be where he's going to start the season. 
Uh, the team feels comfortable with him there. Eric, or sorry, not Eric Dubois, Pierre-Luc Dubois and, and, and Nikolai Ehlers and him have formed a good line together. They've played a little bit together in the past when Dubois was here last year. So I think that's another thing to watch. I, I, you know, Paul Stasny is, can, can come in there if, 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 if Kopp doesn't kind of work out. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, that's looking good. Andrew Kopp has always, I, I would say every year, kind of elevated his game to a certain extent. Last year was career and goals, assists, points, and that all came in a truncated, you know, year due to COVID. So what can Andrew Kopp do now um, that he's kind of put together such a good year last year? You know, can he take that next step into a second line role where he can not just be a good possession player, but also a good production player. And that's kind of what you need in your top six. And so far um, he's looked really good in camp. And I thought that line looked good in, in Monday or in Sunday's game. So, you know, th those are the things that I've noticed so far. And, you know, there's little other things here and there, of course um, it's been a physical camp. I thought Brendan Dillon has been great in terms of ramping up that intensity and, Obviously, Josh Morrissey and Nate Schmidt, they look like they're really kind of gelling together in which is going to likely be this, this team's top pairing going into the season. So lots of storylines um, and that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, it's all kind of good news if you're a Jets fan. If you're watching, you know, us talk about it here, even coming down to the rink and watching it, there's a lot more good news than there is bad news. And that wasn't something you could say in the last couple of seasons. Yeah, great analysis, Scott. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to me that uh, Andrew Kopp signs that one-year deal in the offseason. He's gonna, He can be an unrestricted free agent at the yeah. end of the year, and the Jets are going to give him a heck of a, an opportunity to earn some money yeah. if he gets those uh, second-line minutes all year. But uh, I think it does sound like there's a lot of promise there. You've got the veteran lineup. And that's one of the questions that is that come up is which of the young players are going to get in. And it does sound like there's lots of guys getting their opportunities. Anyway, Scott, we will continue to discuss this throughout training camps, throughout the season, and very much appreciate you joining us here today and all the best with the rest of the day. There we go.